Welcome everyone to Songwriter Spotlight, brought to you from the West Tennessee Delta Heritage Center right here in historic Brownsville, Tennessee. Home of the Tina Turner Museum, the Sleepy John Estes Home, and the West Tennessee Music Museum. We are so glad that you're here with us tonight. My name is Sonia, and I will be your host. Our spotlight tonight is a young man from Jackson, Tennessee. One of my favorites, especially to bring here to perform for groups and other activities that we have here at the center. If you are from Jackson, Tennessee, you're gonna know him immediately. You've heard him at the West Tennessee Farmers Market. You've heard him at different venues all over Jackson and really all over West Tennessee. So help me welcome Tyler Goodson to our Spotlight Stage. Tyler, thank you for being here tonight. And let's just dive right in. Are you originally from Jackson? I'm originally from Henderson, Tennessee. How did you wind up in Jackson? After I graduated in 2005, uh, my parents both had jobs in Henderson and they both ended up getting jobs in Jackson. So we, we moved on up to Jackson and actually started working at Bandstand as soon as I got into Jackson, like a month into us being into Jackson, I started working at Bandstand in Jackson. So you basically, when did you start music then? You've, it seems like you've been a musician for quite a while. Yeah, I've, I've picked at the guitar when I was, uh, you know, I was three or four years old whenever I was first introduced to the guitar. It put in my hands and my grandfather and my father would play bluegrass and traditional gospel hymns like every Sunday and, uh, and we would, we would have bluegrass jam circles and I would not be able to play the guitar. So they basically ended up getting me an auto harp, which is a lot smaller and a banjo. And so that's, I would play that. And then whenever that wasn't going on, I would, I would get them to show me guitar stuff and still try to wrestle the beast with it being so big. And basically after that, I, uh, I didn't play a lot of guitar in, elementary school, early high school, and then I got an electric guitar my sophomore year, the end of my sophomore year, and started playing some punk rock, you know, earlier 2000s type music. And after two years of doing that, I discovered Stevie Ray Vaughan, watched him play, and that just changed my life of going down this blues path that I'm doing now. So, and at that point, that was whenever we had moved to Jackson and I had just gotten a job with Chuck McGill at Bandstand and that was about 2005. What was your job at Bandstand? It, well, it was to be a janitor and to uh, sell guitars, of course, restring guitars. And uh, I got into repair, guitar repair a lot because there was nobody there. and. I was just eager to learn it, so I, I took that part up. So I did, did a lot of it, and uh, the main guys would mainly be out of the store, so I was, I was doing a lot of it, but the guitar repair is what I was kind of known for there. So, like, you get a brand new guitar from us, and it's got a little old strings. I could, repa I could replace the strings in five minutes for you. So. Fresh new strings on a brand new guitar. What else? What else could you? <laughs> you mentioned several instruments that you've played over the years. Can you or do you still play all of those instruments? Uh, not well. I can. I I say anybody that can play any, that plays a string instrument can get a note out of anything with strings on it if they try enough and. I just like trying. So it's kind of like a horn player. A lot of horn players, they can play multiple horns and it's just kind of move, same fingerings just on a different spot. So that's how I look at it. But yeah, I do play, I actually play pedal steel now, working at Bandstand. Chuck McGill was a huge influence. So he, uh, he got me into playing pedal steel and now I play rock and roll pedal steel. So, and I play at nursing homes every, 
well before COVID, it was every Monday with an older gentleman. And it's, it, it reminds me of like what I did with my dad and my grandfather, the traditional bluegrassy type hymns. And then he, Ken Mallard is his name. He's a songwriter, so he's, there's no wrong way to play it. He wants me to play it how I want to play it. So that's, I do pedal steel and I take guitar and play guitar. That's mainly what I do now. And uh, I mean, I've still got my auto harp and my banjo that. I have to ask you to talk a little bit about the auto harp because you've told me a really cool story about learning to play that instrument. Yeah, yeah. So whenever I was playing auto harp, I was a little too small for a guitar. So nobody really knew how to play it, I guess, in my family. So when I got it, I laid it in my lap because I could read the chords in front of me. So I thought you played it like this, all crooked. And I was wondering why anybody would ever put put the, the note names right there. Because like, I know you weren't supposed to do that because the way the strings are lined. But also, the auto harp that I was given was a left-handed auto harp. It wasn't even a right-handed auto harp. So it was just completely backwards. So I don't, I probably couldn't even play a normal auto harp if I had to. And then, so I, I see uh, later in my life, I see a picture of Johnny Cash and June Carter and sure enough, she's got it like this, holding it like a child. And I'm just blown away at how I did not know how to play the auto harp the correct way all these years. Well, I'm sure that helps you to be flexible in your music. Tell me about the first song you're going to share. All right, the first song is called Give Me Back to Jackson. And it's, uh, to be honest, that song is really about, like whenever I would go out and do a gig, I, I do a lot of solo gigs, so I don't usually have a lot of help. I do a lot of it by myself. I book all my stuff. I don't have a roadie. I don't have anybody pushing gear for me, so. This song is about just getting back to Jackson so I can go to sleep, honestly. That's what it's, that's what the call home is for it. But it's, um, it's one of my standard blues boogie songs, if you will. So, and I'm gonna let you hear some right now. Being a lot of places made me feel all right. Nothing like the time I left last night Give me back to Jackson Give me back to Jackson oh, Won't you give me back to Jackson, Jackson, Tennessee Well, the roof that flows right out of the sea Go downtown and you what I mean Give me back to Jackson Give me back to Jackson Songwriting. 
Tell me when you began thinking about putting your own uh, words and music together. It was definitely after when I, uh, watching Stevie Ray Vaughan play and being connected to the, the blues thing and feeling like I could express myself out of that more than just playing guitar. It's like I liked it enough that I thought I should write a song basically, where before it was just reciting different songs over and not, not even really thinking about writing songs. Like it literally took Stevie Ray Vaughan to get me motivated. Like it's like, it's like I saw something that I thought I might could do, basically, you know, like I could, and it was, well, I mean, he looks like he's trying to break out of jail or something while he's playing guitar and it just sounds good. So. You know, like, the, and it, you can tell he's got emotion while he's singing and he's not, you know, it's like, it's like up and down. So it was just so different coming from gospel bluegrass, punk rock type stuff. And, and then seeing one guy just completely motivate me into to feeling a certain way just from him playing a guitar and singing and you know, just encompassing the whole, I'm gonna be a front man and I'm gonna play the lead. I'm, you know, just taking over and being powerful, basically. That's, you know, it's like I saw something more to it than just reciting a song, basically. But I knew it was a, a, a tall mountain to climb, you know. It's hard to, that's really why I haven't written a lot is because it's, you know, I'm always, thinking it's maybe not good enough. And then I'm thinking about words and playing guitar at the same time. So, you know, I wanted to be good. <laughs> Which came first? Did you start out with just the music component of it for the guitar or were you trying to put the words together? I definitely do the music first and then hear that and then what, what words might come from just listening to that but some of the songs I've written that have just come to me like the words and the music just kind of go together but it's never just the words I'm never just the words guy it's either music and then the words or either both of it at the same time so but I, I don't I don't really go around putting voice memos of just voices or the you know phrases or whatever in my in my phone it's it's guitar licks like it's something like that i'll say that or a, a certain progression or something like that and then then i get back home and i i like go through all of them and i find one i like and i drink my coffee and i'm trying to think like what does this remind me of like what can i write about that's that's how i write basically do you find that when you're writing music or words that there's something particular that inspires you? Um, it's each individual song is like its own spirit, if you will. Like it, each one, I just look at each song like it has been given to me like a gift. So it's just me trying to puzzle and piece parts and stuff together that's going on up here. Because that's what every artist is. It's up, it's up here and it's got to be put into physical form at some point. So that's, that's how I look at it. So it's, every song is its own album to me where, you know, if you're the listener, you're you're thinking of it as multiple parts, but but uh, for me a song it's like I've got to get all those parts just to make that one song. The words and the music have to come together. So I know that you've collaborated with a lot of people on writing projects. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I can't probably can't name all of them. Um, I've written Chuck McGill and I would write try to write almost once a week, something like that. I have a friend, Willie Evans, that I write with. Uh, Jimmy Taylor and I, J.D. Taylor, we've written a few songs. Um, 
uh, whenever I went in the studio with Sean, a lot of the stuff I do is like help people with progressions and maybe add a turnaround or a, a different chord here or just change something up. And not necessarily so much to do with the words, maybe something with the with the hook of the song, maybe clean that up or, but it's usually, you know, I, I hear the music first all the time. So that's usually whenever people are, I'm getting in touch with people, they know that I'm coming to the table with the music and not so much the words. So it's, that's, if I can find someone with that kind of a balance where, you know, all, all singer songwriters and like artists that write music, everybody needs, uh, it's like every, you know, it's like a relationship. Any, any two writers can write a song, but that doesn't mean they're happy after they get done doing it. And then some, some people just get together and they just produce music, just, you know, so. So that's, that's what I, it's an interesting balance to try to achieve, to, for me to find somebody that has more words and not so much music, but that is open to maybe changing some of the words and maybe let me change their chord progression or something like that. So, and then I always try to make it sound old. <laughs> old school. Why is that? It's just from where, I, that's from playing bluegrass and then getting into new music and then falling back into old music after, after um, getting into Steve Ray Vaughan and Jimi Hendrix and the Allman Brothers, you start looking at who, who did they like? You know, who did they listen to? And it's, you know, you go back and listen to that and it's, that's what I'm into. Like I, I can still dig on some old bluegrass. I can, I can, I can't really do the punk rock thing anymore. I can do Jimi Hendrix though, you know, so, so, but in my mind, there will be no punk rock if there wasn't Jimi Hendrix and, you know, and there's, that's not exactly true, but it's just it's so influential that, that it's hard not to, for me, whenever I hear something new, I'm trying to search it. What does it sound like that's old? Cause that's what I listen to is something that's old all the time. So somebody gives me a basic progression. And then I try to put a, some kind of a jazzy chord or a bluesy feel to it kind of a thing. That's, that's what I, that's my chord vocabulary is like all the old, older music. It's interesting that you talk about trying to find the older roots of a song because I know from seeing you perform that you like to tell the stories of the songs, whether it's uh, inspiration from the writer of the song or just history of that song. Uh, so how did you become an historian and storyteller when you perform? Because nobody knows about it. That's, it, it feels like, to me it feels like I, I'm responsible to tell people that this is a Muddy water song. It's not a Rolling Stone song, you know, that, that kind of a thing. Just uh, not being a teacher or too informative, just, you know, just, just, it's just like something you need to know, like, uh, Muddy Waters' real name is Morgan McKinley Field, but nobody knows that. So, you know, you say, this is a Morgan McKinley Field song, and they're like, what? Who is that? I thought that was a Muddy Waters song. But, yeah, I, I, I think it's interesting, because, honestly, I don't have anything else to talk about. <laughs> I mean, that's got a lot to do with it. I just, my whole life is based around music, you know, and, and my wife and our dogs and and I like a garden, I like, you know, but I, I don't like go out to bars and hang out and have jokes to tell and entertain people. I, I, need, I need that to entertain people, not, not my voice. So, so letting people know about, you know, where the history of something comes from or who it is. It's, if it, it's important to me and it's something I can talk about. You mentioned Shine earlier. And I know you've written a song about him. Tell us who Shine is. All right, Shine is, his real name is James Wilburn. 
And I, I can't recite how old he is, but he is probably 71, two or three, somewhere in there. And he's a harmonica player. And he's got a shoe shine shop at, in Jackson, Tennessee at the farmer's market. And he and I are, actually me and him met when I was at bandstand, I was restringing guitars and he needed a guitar restrung. And uh, whenever I got done, I, I was playing this and he was like, that's Jimmy Reed. So, so we just hit it off like that. And he told me he played harmonica and invited me down to the farmer's market to play. And, uh, and we just started playing at the farmer's market every Saturday. And I would actually get him to come and sit in with my band you know, like at the tavern and all that. So, and then we did a CD at uh, Jackson Records. And, um, but he is, he's just a dear friend to me and I wanted to write a song about him. And so here you go, here's, here's Farmer's Market Man. <laughs> Jackson, Tennessee, down at the farmer's market, there's a man you need to meet, yeah, go downtown, Lafayette Street, you'll find the man, man you need to meet. City Deli every Wednesday with a band called Electric Gumbo and I'm playing pedal steel in it and guitar and then on Thursdays the tavern just recently opened up and I played the first night for music there and before they closed I was there every Thursday probably for two and a half years before they closed down and they just want to they want me to play there again and the Right now, the only form that you can find me is on Facebook, and it's just under my name, Tyler Goodson. And uh, I post where I'm playing every week and just about every day. Uh, you said there's not an overall theme to your music, to your songwriting, but the last two songs have had obvious Jackson influences and Jackson connections. You're, you're writing about your surroundings and the people and the places that, that you care about. So, what is the story of the next song? All right, it's uh, it's called Miss Saul, and it is not like the other two songs at all. It's uh, 
it came to me basically just from walking out at Pinson Mounds and uh, the main large mound, the Saul's Mound, and I just, it just felt like I needed to write about that. And it's, there's not a lot of words to it, and it's a, it's kind of a short and sweet, get in and get out kind of a song. But here it is, I'll play it for you. Hello, Mrs. Saul, take me away, take me so far, far from this place. Hello, Mrs. Saul, sail me away, sail me so far, far from this place. Set me free from the light of your city and take me down to lay be my river like love Hello, Mrs. Saul, take me away, take me so far, far from this place. Thank you all for joining us tonight. I hope that you've enjoyed our conversation with Tyler and the music that he shared with us. I hope that you will be back here in two weeks for our next Songwriter Spotlight. And if there's ever an episode that you missed or one that you want to revisit, please follow us on our Facebook page or on our YouTube channel. You'll be able to see them all there. Tyler, thank you so much for being here tonight. It's been such a pleasure to have you in the building again and to learn stories behind your music. That Those were things I had not heard before. I'm so grateful that you came to share your original music with us. I know there's a song you've been working on and it may not quite be finished yet, but it would really be nice if you could play us out with it. Yeah, I can, I can definitely do that. And thank you for having me. Thank you so, so much for having me. Um, and this, this song is called Walking Away. You're in my head all night long, waking up to find you in home. Walking away